Use substitution or integration by use substitution can be a hard topic to learn when you're learning integral calculus. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to go through the steps of integrating by use substitution with a given substitution, which is, you know, a pretty common type of problem that you might run into where the problem will say, here's the substitution that you need to make. Here's what you should make your U equal to. Now go apply U substitution and go through the rest of the steps after that. Of course, half the battle is figuring out what to make your U when you're trying to do a full U substitution problem. But I found that it really helps to kind of break it down into pieces and think about these different things step by step. So uh, today I wanted to show you how to go through the rest of the steps once your U has been given to you and I will be coming out with some more videos that talk more about how to actually choose your U. So if you're finding this video helpful be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and keep checking back for my next videos but without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this example. We are going to evaluate the integral by making the given substitution. So this is an interesting kind of example that you see actually pretty often when you're first learning use substitution where they actually will tell you here's the substitution to make now make it and use use substitution to solve the problem um, so in this case they're telling us that the integral we're going to solve is dt over 1 minus 6t all to the fourth power and then the substitution we're going to make is u equals 1 minus 6t so with u substitution you know in general the first step is kind of figuring out what the substitution you're going to make is in this case that's already been given so that definitely does help alleviate you know the difficulty of u substitution the next example i'm going to be getting into i'm going to spend some more time talking about how to figure out what substitution to make or how to make what to make your u um, but for this example here, that's given. So really we can just kind of skip ahead to the actual substitution part of U substitution problems. When we're doing these U substitution problems, once we've figured out what we want to make our U or you know the thing that we're going to substitute out, the next step is to basically figure out what DU is. So DU you're going to figure out by just taking the derivative of whatever U is. So DU, if U is one minus six T, we're going to take the derivative with respect to t because t is the variable in this integral equation. We know that because we have a dt right here. So as a result, we're taking the derivative with respect to t of u in order to find this. Well, the derivative of 1 of a constant is always going to be 0. And then the derivative of minus 6t is just going to be minus 6. And then when we take the derivative with respect to t, in these u substitution problems we then need to add on a dt in here as well so where this is going to come into play is now what we want to do is we're going to rewrite our integral in terms of this u and du instead of having it in terms of t and dt so to do that what you want to do is first start by going to your integral and replacing whatever you've determined that your u is going to be with u. In this case, you can see that we have 1 minus 6t right here, which is exactly what our u is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our integral and we're going to replace what's in the parentheses here with u. So doing that is going to leave us with u to the fourth on the bottom here on the denominator. Then what we need to do is deal with our dt here because dt we also want to convert to be in terms of du. Well, to do that, what we can do, we figured out what we kind of figured out this equation over here that involves dt. All we really have to do now is take this equation and solve it for dt. Well, to do that, we can just divide both sides of this by negative 6. And we get basically 1 over ne or negative 1 6 times du equals dt. So dt is the same as negative 1 6 du. So we could basically think of doing negative 1 6 times du replacing our dt here. So now once we've done that, there's a couple things to kind of point out right off the bat here. First of all, the numerator of this fraction is just a constant negative 1 6 times this du. So whenever we have a constant, what we can do, well, in this case, I, I should kind of clarify that whenever we have a constant times a bunch of other stuff, which we can rewrite this as a constant negative 1 6 times du over u to the fourth. Whenever we have a constant times a bunch of stuff within our integral, we can pull that constant out of the integral. So doing that is actually going to give us 
negative uh, one six times the integral of du over u to the fourth. So now that we have this, what you also can kind of think about next, this is a little weird looking when you have a du within your fraction here like this. And this does happen, you know, a lot of u substitution problem or integration problems in general, they may give you uh, a problem where you have a du or a dt or a dx or whatever in your numerator. Well, really, this is the exact same thing. We can basically just move that out of the fraction and kind of tack it on to the end over here. So we can write du over here and then just replace it with a one. So du over u to the fourth is the same as one over u to the fourth times du. Now it's kind of weird because this indicator du or dx or dt, what we basically did there was we treated du as if it's its own term. It technically isn't, but within the context of, you know, within this integral, you can kind of think of it like that. Really what it is, it's an, it's an indicator that we're integrating this with respect to u now. So now we've applied our u substitution, we've applied our substitution to this integral. And what we've done, we haven't actually integrated it yet, so we still have some work to do. But what we have done is we've rewritten the original integral we started with, this one here, and we've rewritten it in terms of u, which should hopefully give us an easier integral to evaluate. So now we can go ahead and evaluate this integral. Well, to do this, <clears throat> since we just have one over u to some power, it's gonna be easier to rewrite this not as a fraction. So what you wanna keep in mind is whenever you have something to a power on a denominator of a fraction, you can move it up to the numerator and make the power negative. So this is actually the same as u to the negative fourth power. So now this is the integral we're trying to evaluate. Well, the reason why that's easier is now we have this in a form where we can actually just use the power rule to evaluate it. Well, the power rule for integration just says that we're going to raise our power by one. Well, negative four plus one is negative three, and then divide by our new power. So this is going to be the antiderivative of u to the negative four, which means at this point, we have actually evaluated the integral and integrated this integral. Now, when you do that, the du disappears. The du falls off because like I said, that du was really just an, uh, an indicator that we wanted to integrate with respect to u. And now that we've done that, we can get rid of the du and just have this function that is the integral of the function that we were told to integrate or the antiderivative of the function that we were told to integrate. So now that we have actually integrated it, we want to undo our u substitution because we we were given some function in that was a function of t. We want to end up with a function of t. We don't want to change it to u because really in the context of this problem, the u doesn't actually have any meaning. We want to keep our variable the same. So what we want to do now is make this kind of reverse substitution where we're replacing u with one minus six t instead of you know the other way that we did before. So u is going to be one minus six t to the negative third power over negative three, and then times negative one six. Then really at this point, we just need to kind of simplify. So the negative one six and the negative uh, three on the denominator, basically that's just gonna be like uh, one over 18. And then <clears throat> this one minus six t to the negative third would be the same as putting one minus six t to the positive third on the denominator. So basically we're gonna end up with one over 18 times one minus six t all to the third power. I should say, actually, we need one more piece here. We do need to add on a plus c. So this plus c now is going to give us the indefinite integral to this function that we originally started with based on this substitution that they gave us. All right, so that's it for that problem. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe as well and hit that bell icon while you're down there so you're notified of all my next videos. And like I said, I'm gonna be having some more U substitution videos coming out this week, so be sure to check back for those and we can keep on learning about U substitution. I have made some other videos about it already. If you wanna check those out, go ahead and click on one of those videos over there and hope to see you next time. Thanks.